Oh, Lord have mercy. What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, hi, what's up? Uh, if you've never seen me before, pause this video, do a quick Google search and either start jacking off or run for the hills, ho. All right, but <laughs> anyway, we are about to dive into my January favorites, but we have a little bit of a twist today. Now listen, it's 2017, it is a brand new year, and I always get requests to put in products that I also didn't love in my videos. And I've kind of stayed away from that because I feel like with me especially, it's that fine line of everyone always wants to make a circus out of every opinion I have. Um, I think because I, maybe I have my own brand, I'm not allowed to speak on certain things, and that's what some people like to let me know. But listen, at the end of the day, I'm a makeup lover. I buy so much makeup each month, and I try out so many products. Um, I'm gonna start putting in products that I don't love. So I think for the new year, this is gonna be the January holy grails and fails. So, I think we should just dive in and I'm gonna basically just tell you guys all my favorite products that I've been loving over the last month and then a few that didn't really work for me. But um, January was a crazy month for me. You guys all know that I was in Paris for Men's Fashion Week. So we filmed a little travel vlog. Now me and Nathan got really sick on our trip, so we kinda had to cut it short, but we filmed a lot of really cool stuff and we also have filmed Nathan getting a tattoo and we also just did IMATS, which is a makeup convention. So we kind of combined it all and that video will be coming later this week. So watch out for it on my channel. Now, besides that, you guys, let's just dive right into it. All right, my first holy grail is from the brand Stila. Now, these are the Magnificent Metals Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadows. Whew, I'm winded, bitch. <laughs> now, I'm wearing this on my lid today. I wore it in a few videos already in the Get Ready My Rolls Royce featuring Nikita. I wore the gold one. Now, listen, I have been wearing these every single day. There are a lot of colors, so besides these two, which I know you guys are all gonna be like, what is on your lid? This shade is called Rose Gold Retro. It is so stunning, and these are really easy to play with because they are literally liquid glitter in a bottle. Let's just swatch my hand right here. Oh, are you kidding me? They dry really instantly. There is full coverage. A lot of these glitter items from other brands, you kind of swipe it and it's like chunky, it's watery, it's not amazing. Somehow, Stila perfected this formula, and the good news is there are a lot of other Color. So they have like this crazy purple, they have a black with gold glitter inside of it, and of course they have a pure gold which I've worn before. These are just really good for, even if you don't want to wear all this eye makeup, you can literally just throw some glitter on the lid, a little orange in the crease and a lash, and you're ready to fucking slay, baby. So these are definitely going to be worn down all year, and um, hopefully they release more colors. Let's move on to some foundation. I know a lot of you are going to be a little shook that I'm including an amazing drugstore brand in my favorites, but yes, the new Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation is so unreal. Now, last month I did a little battle of the foundations and I put this up against a crazy luxury brand, and this one really sold a show, and I'm like, listen, for $5.95, if something can be beautiful, flawless, and have a great finish, I think we have a winner. So Wet n Wild, I feel like, I don't know if they've been stepping it up, but to me, they definitely have. I know a lot of people are like, Jeffrey, they've always been great. But I remember like back in the day in high school, I tried it and I was like, mm, no. But fast forward to 2016, I used a lot of Wet n Wild stuff. They had some of the bombest highlighters. Um, of last year and they're affordable which I think is amazing so a lot of you got to see this put to the test if you missed it I will link it down below but this foundation you guys it blends beautiful it is just amazing if you like a really nice matte mannequin finish definitely should try this out this Sicily double tensia primer I think I'm saying it wrong T-E-N-S-E-U-R. Y'all, I ain't French, okay? So someone help me out. I always get read to filth for mispronouncing things. But anyway, I reviewed this again a few months ago and it was amazing. Let me just say that first, like right off the bat, it was amazing. But then it kind of sat on the shelf for a minute because, you know, 50 other primers came out. So I revisited this all of last month. Everywhere I traveled, I brought this and it is so sickening. Price is a little high, it's a little up there. A lot of you were like, girl, mm -mm, we ain't gonna try that. But if you can just get a sample of this or just invest in an amazing primer, for some reason when your skin is bare and clean, you put it on everywhere, it almost gets a little like tacky and it just feels amazing. And the foundation just, I'm wearing it today, of course. The foundation just sits, oh, 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 like 
so beautifully. I don't know if I've ever experienced a primer like this. It's also supposed to have long-term skincare benefits, which is probably why the price is a little up there because it's not just a normal ass primer. It does have some amazing skincare benefits. So this one ain't going anywhere anytime soon. How many people and how many brands put out contour books last year? I think a million. I have tried everything from Morphe to Tarte to everything and I have this Lorac Pro contour book sitting on my shelf and I really hadn't given it much love and I've been using it the last few months and I'm really really into it. I really am. Now what tripped me out is that even though I've been using this for two months, like I'm just gonna take this Morphe brush, this is really what I use it for, and I'll go in and for some reason the pan looks like I haven't really been using it, which I love. So that means the formula is really bomb. So if you see me barely pressing it, like it is just, I don't know what it is, but the powders are like, oh, they're like velvet in my hands. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> But um, they blend amazing and they just get your face really snatched. Now, I think my only complaint about this is that I wish that there were more shades. I feel like so many contour palettes have like three shades. I'm like, girl, there are so many more skin tones than that. So luckily, this one does work for me. Um, if you wanna try a new contour palette and you're not really sure, you know, I would definitely give this one a whirl. I think Lorac has been around for a really long time. Um, I remember in high school, they had this hot pink blush. I will never forget it and I wore it every single day. I think I bought like five of them. So it's cool to see this brand going really strong and still slaying the game. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about in the makeup family is this new Givenchy. It's kind of like a primer. It's like a highlighter. It is a strobing pop-up jelly highlighter for face and body. Now, let me show you why I loved it. It's pink, it's very pink. Now, Givenchy has a beauty brand. Of course, we all know them for their amazing fashion, but their brand, kind of like Gucci and other high-end brands, are not really celebrated by makeup artists. Or not, they're not really used a lot. So I'm like, okay, girl, let me just give this brand a little whirl. I'm gonna demonstrate this for you because this is so pretty. All right, now if you see this, like, I'm gonna try to shake it. It's, it really is like a jelly. And if you touch it, you see that? It's like not, really moving. It's really weird. Like the consistency is almost like, I don't know, it's like a flubber type of like weird putty type of thing. All right, so basically you take a little bit of this, right? I'm just gonna take it like this and you put it on your face. So we'll pretend this is my face or your body and you just kind of rub it in and it gives you this beautiful pink shimmer. Like it's just really pretty. Let's let that dry. So I'm gonna turn on my iPhone flashlight because the beauty lights kind of diffuse it, but this has like this really, really fine, pretty glitter into it and I'm kind of living for it. So if you really don't want to wear makeup and you don't want to wear foundation that day, I definitely would advise on literally just throwing this on, some mascara, lip gloss, bye girl. But um, it is really pretty. Now it doesn't really say that it's a primer, but I used it for a primer the other day, just for shits and giggles. And it was really pretty. And then I also took it and slathered it all over my arms because I was wearing a short sleeved outfit and I kind of lived for it. So if you have uh, an extra moment, I would just suggest you try this bitch out. It's time to dive into my favorite skincare of last month. And I'm really excited about this one because one of my favorite skincare brands ever, Glam Glow, finally released their Sonic the Hedgehog Blue Gravity Mud Mask. Now, I reviewed this on my channel a while ago with Manny and Nathan. And I guess it was like kind of like a PR thing where it was only for promotional use only. And then the internet blew up and it went so crazy and viral. People were like, hi, we wanna buy that. So last month they finally launched this for the brand. It is basically exactly like their silver gravity mud, which we've all seen a million selfies of people peeling them off. Now this one is literally hot metallic blue. Let me just open it up. It is so stunning. I don't know why. It's like, for me, it's really addicting to like put on masks that peel. Look how beautiful that is, by the way. I'm like, oh my God. This mask is amazing. It firms, it tightens, it tones. And for some reason, there's something really addicting about peeling a mask off and just kind of seeing your skin get a little revived. So if you've never tried this, I definitely recommend it. It is actually something that works. So I do know that this product is limited edition. Well, the blue one is, so you better get it before it's gone. I need to, I'm like sitting here like, I need to buy like 12, but um, if you've ever used this, let me know in the comments below and let me know your thoughts because it is one of my go-tos. 
Next up for skincare is from the brand Fresh. They are one of my favorite brands in Sephora. Now this is the Rose Floral Toner. You can use it before your makeup. You can also use it to set your makeup or as like a little refresher. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes throughout the day, my nose gets a little cakey. Things start shifting. It's hot out, it's cold out. My makeup's like, what the hell is going on? These are really good for just kind of like throughout the day. I mean, I know this is a little big to put in your purse, which y'all know I put this in my bag. Now I literally can just spray a little bit of it on and it kind of just revives your makeup and gives you a little moment. And oh, it literally smells like liquid rose petals. It's very soft and dainty. I loved it. So if you want to hydrate and refresh, definitely recommend this guy. Before we get into a few products that didn't work for Miss Thing right here, I'm gonna dive into some fashion. Now, this is all about the brand Christian Louboutin. You guys already know I'm a red bottom whore. <laughs> now, they recently put out a lot of stuff from their brand, 500 styles and new shoes, I can't keep up. But these ugh, sneakers though, are so stunning. They are basically Swarovski rainbow sneakers and I'm like a little bird. When I see something shiny, I'm like, nah, hi. <laughs> I don't know. I just like when I see shiny things and crystals, I become enamored. And I just think that these are so beautiful. To match the shoes, they came out with this tiny little nano bag. Look at how stunning the detail is. So you put this over like a normal purse. I'm just going to stand up. If my vagina shows, I am so sorry. It is so cute. So basically, if you're someone that only likes to, you know, carry their cell phone, a lip gloss, and you know, maybe a tampon, a dildo, or a plan B, you definitely uh, should check out little bags. <laughs> now it's time to get into my fails. This is basically, let me do, I guess I'm gonna say it once and maybe I'm gonna have to say it every month because people love to twist and turn everything around these days. But what I mean by a fail is that it didn't personally work for me. So if these products or anything that I ever mention in the future that I don't like and it works for you, Thank God it worked for you because who wants to waste money on shit that they don't fucking use? But these items just really kind of fell flat for me and I'm gonna go into detail of why. So every product I have a different experience with, obviously. So um, let's dive into it. Now, first off, girl, I love Urban Decay so much and I really hate having to justify saying that. Y'all know I'm an Urban Decay ride or die fan, but their new Vice Liquid Lipsticks. I don't know what happened with these, but I feel like it was just kind of an epic fail for me. Now, I swatched these a few weeks ago. You can see how they looked on camera. Girl, they were not that great. For some reason, I think the metallic ones were way worse than the matte ones, but they were so long lasting. A lot of people do like that. So if you want a lipstick that will, you know, outstand a nuclear blast or anything crazy, these are probably for you, but they were so, just drying and made my lips like, ugh. And when I took it off, it was like, it was not good. And I feel like the metallics were really just not amazing. So I hope that they maybe reformulate and put out other shades and try to improve the formula. <sighs> just not for me. Now, if you guys have tried these, please let me know in the comments below what your experience was. The next one is the new Becca primer that just came out last month. Now look. I thought it was gonna be sickening. It's lavender. Now this is called the First Light Priming Filter Instant Complexion Refresh. That's, that's such a long fucking name, <laughs> fuck. But um, so basically this is supposed to like take away all the dullness in your face once you rub it in. It's supposed to kind of revive you. Now, it doesn't really do what it says. Let's just put this on my hand right now. Oh my God, that just shot on my leg. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this on my hand. You, you see what it's supposed to look like now. This isn't really like a color corrector because it's not really canceling out anything. It's definitely supposed to give your skin an extra little like boost of, I guess, light energy. To, you know, if your skin is a little dull, this will definitely help. But here's really why it's an epic fail for me. Oh my God. Okay, if anyone has cleaned their house with a, a lemon Lysol wipe or that spray you clean wooden floors with, like it's on the back of my hand and I'm like, oh my God. Like, stay back, stay back. It just smells really like a cleaning like product. Oh my God, I don't like it. It is, it is a very lemon Lysol. You're about to rub down a wooden fucking chair and I just really don't love it. And at the end of the day, I feel like they maybe were a little, like they were, they were kind of reaching with this one. I didn't, it just didn't work for me. And the smell, I still can't get over it. The last item for this video, 
<sighs> the last fail is by the brand by Terry. Now this is a allegedly an anti-wrinkle dark circle eye bag serum corrector. That's not a mouthful. Now here's the thing. The formula was not terrible. Now I've, I've used way worse concealers, but the formula was also not amazing. But here's my one huge problem. This is $69. I'm like, fuck bitch. For a concealer that is really, really up there, of course, by Terry is a luxury skincare makeup brand. But here's the problem. This shade is called Fair. Let me just double check. Yes, this is number one fresh fair. So basically, this is the lightest shade. This was not light enough for me. I think I am a, I mean, my skin is pale, but there's also a million girls out there that have the same problem where they just really can't find a light enough concealer. Um, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with these brands putting out five shades. I'm like, girl, there's a whole vast world out there. And for some reason, I'm not gonna put this on my face. I'm gonna put this on my hand real quick. Like, for some reason, I was, I had really high hopes for this concealer. Now, it blended out pretty. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer, but not as creamy. But the color, I was kind of offended. It just wasn't light enough for me. It was just, mmm. I don't know. I, I would, I'm just like, if brands are gonna put out a concealer, you might wanna put out like 15 to 20 shades to start off. And um, I don't know. So when I put it on, it literally like was darker than my skin tone and I'm like, so what's the opposite of concealing? Because this was just not for me. So this was definitely a fail for me and hopefully they can expand their color range and I might give it another whirl. And that concludes my holy grails and fails for January 2017. Oh my god, you guys, this year is, I feel like it's, I mean, even though this year just started, I feel like it's gonna fly by and I'm really scared about it. But um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Now, if you guys like me incorporating products that I didn't like, of course, please sound off down below and let me know your thoughts. Obviously, I am filming all these videos for you guys and I, it was very highly requested, but did you like it? <laughs> Let me know down below. And um, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. I love you. Mwah. Bye, guys.